Hi all, welcome to another in a 5 to 10 minute nutshell game. Let's look at Mikhail Tau against Alexander Koblenz. This is in Riga 1961, so Tau's hometown. The magician from Riga. And he's playing against one of his trainers actually. So it might not be completely sound. E4 from Tau. We have the Sicilian defense. We're going to a razor sharp variation. So after a6, we have bishop g5. So the Sicilian Neudorf variation, which is sharp with f4. So this f4 promises e5 as a break, which seems very, very tempting as a tempo gainer at some point. So bishop e7, queen f3. This also is designed to discourage and sometimes uh, b5 because that rook can be a problem. Queen c7, white castles queen side, knight bd7. Quite a ferocious looking position. Usually the main move is g4. An example, this the position has been seen quite a few times before uh, with g5 quite continuing aggressively. Very aggressive line with this pawn sack actually. Very dynamic, aggressive line. But here we see the more modest uh, bishop e2, which has played, been, been played a few times before. h6, the bishop drops back. b5, not minding this potential e5. Black is banking on bishop b7, but guess what Tal plays in this position? If I give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, e takes f6, yeah, not minding his queen being taken. And now two pieces and the rooks attacked and the bishops attacked. Not bad compensation, surely, for the queen. d5, here it gets very interesting. Two main moves here, really, uh, to consider. Uh, but uh, it seems taking the bishop... Uh, <clears throat> sorry, no, there's three main moves to consider. But taking the bishop is not one of them, actually. If we take the bishop... Let's just check this out. Take the bishop... Queen takes f4 check, and black's taking this bishop. So that's actually not one of the possible moves. The two main possible moves are really taking on g7, hitting the rook and threatening to queen, or what Mikhail Tal played. Now taking on g7 is really sharp. This is just an example continuation, where the king's in the center, there's knight takes d5 threatened. Let's continue. This position is just scary. Uh, bishop takes d5. Knight c6 check. This is an engine generated line. Just showing you how it can pan out. Just one scenario. We actually can end up maybe being slightly better for white. Uh, technically or about equal really. It's not much in it. But this is a razor sharp line which could stem from f takes g7. So this is ruled out because of queen takes f4 and taking the bishop. But what Tal plays in this training game, can you guess, is the other main move? If I give you five seconds, starting from now. It actually factors in black's threat, that's a clue. Okay, knight takes e6, it's protecting f4 for the moment. And it opens up this diagonal after f takes, check. And this is very interesting now g6 is played you might think that can the king actually move let's just check this out if the king moves this is actually good for white here king b1 to avoid any check here as I say here then there's bishop g3 this is looking very very good for white queening and getting more material so yeah g6 might actually be one of the better moves available to black uh, bishop takes g6, f takes e7. Now bishop g3, here is a moment where black is, he's, he's threatened with f5, it looks kind of scary. Black plays now knight f6, maybe better is queen c5. Um, and it's complicated, for example, f5, b4, knight e2, e5. Yeah, this, this might be okay, it might be about equal. But in the game we have knight f6, 
rook hg1, b4 here, and guess what Tal plays in this position, which is really incredible. If I give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, rook takes e6. Doesn't mind losing the knight, because now this gigantic bishop not only hits the queen, there's a threat of bishop e5 as well. The queen moves, threatening mate. This has to be parried. It's parried with b3, giving white still this big threat of bishop e5. It's coming. It's it's very difficult to parry. Uh, queen d7, bishop e5. Black's idea, though, is to counter sack. If he doesn't counter sack, he played queen takes e6. What can actually black do? If he doesn't counter sack the queen, let's just check this out. I mean, what does he do? Say this? this that's just checkmate immediately. Uh, if he's going to play this desperate looking move, White can casually just take here, actually. Uh, it doesn't even have to take the rook. And if something like this, take here. It's it's just very horrible for Black. Uh, this, this is just a nightmare for Black. Black can end up losing tons of material. Yeah, so this counter sack seems kind of necessary f takes and now with f takes king takes and you might think well surely you know black he's a rook up but after rook f1 how how is black handling the threats here black tries knight h7 but now bishop takes rook takes guess what white has in this position now the final moment of brilliance I'll give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, rook f8. Yeah, this this is this is great because after knight takes, then there's e8 check, because that's an interruption tactic. So rook takes, e takes, knight takes, but alas, e7 here. So the knight can't move land queening. So we have king f7 takes and now king d1 and white's actually winning this ending uh quite trivially he's got a two to one over here king's just coming to d3 it's a trivial end game win black has to resign here it's very very trivially winning a fantastically complicated game one of their amazing creative <laughs> training games really razor sharp stuff i hope you enjoyed it uh what's what's amazing is also you know when, when the trump card we have kind of delayed threats like bishop e5 that's kind of staggering so white takes time to parry his own threat you know the queen b2 but he's got this big e5 bishop e5 coming amazing stuff and the pawns in the end triumphant uh you know against the greater material okay comments questions likes appreciated thanks very much